just coming through, I let everyone register on before I uh, explain what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so hi again, I'm Tom Connell, I'm the Hair Art Director for Daviness and every Monday if you've, if you've not already been tuning in, <coughs> I've been here on Hair Brain Facebook Live demonstrating something that uh, I call combination cutting and what this means is that I've been working on haircuts that predominantly use the razor but also rely on scissors as well. So a combination of scissor and razor throughout the haircut. Just to show how I find one can, can give um, texture and wearability while the other one gives a, a structure and a functionality to, to the whole thing. What I'm going to be doing today is the, the ones I've been doing over the last few weeks ha have been very salon focused, very um, so let's say consumer friendly, but the ones, the one that I'm going to do today is a little bit more conceptual, it's a little bit stronger. I'm going to be cutting for a little bit more of instinct rather than too much of a, a set section structured pattern. Um, but I still think there's some techniques that are very adaptable that you can take away with you back to the salon to use on the client. So, what I will do as well, the same as every other week. Um, I'm doing this through, uh, I've got a, a stand for my camera, so there isn't anyone that's filming to, to ask questions. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the feed as it goes through, and if there's any questions that I miss that I don't get to answer during the live, uh, I'll make sure I go online later on, and in the comments section, I'll get back to everyone. Um, with this, this haircut, and all the haircuts I've been doing, I've been letting them dry na naturally, so I'm gonna apply some products, I'm gonna apply some of the texture serum, and let it dry naturally. I'm, I'm really enjoying this time at home, to, you know, we can, we, we've all had to slow down and we all don't have to rush around and we all don't have clients waiting in reception, unfortunately. But there's a, the plus side to that is that it's let me work on some haircuts and apply some products and just let them dry let, and let all these little kicks and these little movements that maybe if I'd started to wrap dry or to finish right from the beginning, I wouldn't have seen. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna apply some product through the end let it dry naturally and then I'll post the finished result later. This is a really quick hearse cut. It's really quick, it's really impactful and it works, especially in the salon when you use these similar techniques. I'm, set, I'm gonna just do a quick overview before I start cutting. So I'm gonna create, imagine, imagine like a geometric, like a faint geometric shape combined with like a razored soft Patty Smith mullet but then I'm going to go very square in like with the scissors, like a square flat layer through the back. So I want this to be really flat and textured, really almost multi and cropped on the crown, longer through the back, and then a very, very faint, heavy bowl through the front. So I've spoken enough, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to apply a little bit of the Day Day uh, Davines Spray, my favourite product, don't know how I've ever done without it so far. Uh, this just helps me, when, when I'm especially using the razor, it just helps the razor glide through it and it means when, the, when I've cut a section, it's going to dry with a really nice soft finish to it. So, for anyone else that's been watching these lives, as I've been saying, I like to cut fringes a little bit too long. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to cut the fringe right to, just below the bridge of the nose because I want to leave room for all these little kicks and all these little flicks that you get with the razor that are so nice. You'll notice two things. One, with the razor, I'm only moving about a centimeter distance because I want to make the final centimeter of the hair a little bit textured. And I want to have Almost like very, 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 a very, very shallow layer right through the bottom so it starts to kick and move. You'll also notice that the sectioning is really simple. It's literally split the head in half just behind the ear. The back's out of the way and the front's forward. And then I've thrown everything forward from the crown into the fringe. Because as I said, I want to create this almost like a, a faint bowl geometric shape. Right. 
So I've got that through here now. Now normally, if I wasn't doing a live, I'd be standing here, cutting this to the center of my body. But I'm gonna kind of do a little lean in so that you guys can still see. But I want the haircut to travel around the head. I don't want it to start covering over the eyes. I want it to, it's already too long, which I like. And I want it to sit square around the, as it comes around. So I'm gonna move my body to do that. You can see I'm just combing the hair very, very naturally, letting it fall from the crown as it wants to. And I'm picking it up and I'm not being too forceful with the hair, I'm not combing it really neatly because I do want this haircut, as I said at the beginning, to not be too, too structured. I, I want there to be a, a certain like freedom, like she could have almost cut it herself. And that's the type of haircut that I'm liking at the moment. Right. Okay, I'm gonna spin around and cut this other side of the fringe. Anyone that saw the live I did on Daviness Education Facebook on Tuesday, um, I spoke about a, a book that I'm working from at the moment, and it's a book about skateboarders in Los Angeles in the 70s. It's a photography coffee table book, and the hair in this book is phenomenal. And all of it is very, very soft. The fringes are too heavy. Everything's very flicked. Everything's very moved, very bleached. Um, and I'm working on creating a, a, a photographic collection out of this book. And this is another haircut. I did one on the, on the Daviness Facebook Live last week, which is a, an initial idea. And this one is gonna be one of the ideas from it as well. And it's this kind of, the, the, there's a picture in the book of a young kid skateboarding. And all his hair's very long and flicky at the back. And he's, he's got this little, almost textured bowl haircut. It looks like he's just cut the fringe himself. And this is where the idea came for this cut. So, I'm just gonna spin it back around. So we have, this kind of heavy bowl fringe shape through the front now. And you'll notice that it's coming around square. I've not let it start to, to come around and, and drop over the corner of the eye. So this bit is the one where I'm starting to cut more from my instinct rather than creating too much of a neat section. And so I'm just gonna jump around through here. You guys can see. Like I said, if I don't get to any of the question, all of the questions during the the uh, live, I will make sure that I get to them afterwards. So, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a curved line above the round of the head and sectioning it off out of the way. Because if you remember at the beginning, I said that I wanted a very, very faint bowl. Well, this is the hair that I'm gonna create this very faint bowl with. So I'm sectioning that out of the way. And I'm going to create my shape through here. So if you can see the line of where that fringe is, I want to create almost like a, a faint continuation of that line before I start going into this like longer flicky length. So I'm gonna let the fringe be my guide, but I'm not gonna cut the whole way through. So you can see my razor is coming, is following the line of my fringe, but I'm only being very, very light with it. But I just wanna start that to press in there. Okay, now what I'm liking, what I'm seeing, I'm going to start to remove some length here. So my razor's still staying on the same angle, but I'm going to start to run along the length of the hair because I want to start to remove weight. And as I'm doing it, I'm watching how this reacts, especially because it's a mannequin head. That's going to let me assess how much weight I'm going to put on. It's going to let me make decisions about the final length and the final shape. If I was to go in quite 
strong and, and, and carve the shape in straight away, I'm committed. And I don't necessarily want to be too committed at this time. I want to see how that reacts. Now this piece of hair here should be in the fringe. So I'm going to go in and just pick it up freehand and take that into the fringe. What I like about this that it's, if you can see again through the fringe, it's really round and it's sitting on her eyes too, too, too long really. And the kids in this skateboarding book, all of the hair was like that. I don't know how, how any of them actually saw on the skateboard because all the fringes were far too long. And that's what I'm going to, uh, that's, that's the, the, the theme that I'm feeling for this, all of these haircuts that I'm working on at the moment. So you can see if I just move that back out of the way, you can see now that we have the fringe and we have some of these short layers that are sitting on top of this length in the same vein as the fringe. And if I spin the hair, uh, the, the, the mannequin around, so you can see now I stand behind it in my white t-shirt, you can see where that length is pressing in and creating this faint bow line. And at the moment, I'm not gonna commit to the perimeter length too much I'm liking it at the moment. I'm going to refine it as it, as it starts to dry um, during the course of the rest of the haircut. I'm going to keep coming back to that and having a look at it. But for the time being, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to bring this section down from the top. And this is going to come in and be my faint bowl shape. So again, I'm letting the hair fall exactly as it wants to. I'm following the line of my fringe. And I'm taking that in. And you'll notice that I didn't cut it all off as one. I didn't, I didn't make sure every bit of hair was taken because I want there to be a blend. I don't want it to be a, a disconnected thing. I want there to be a blend all the way through. And I want, if I was to color this afterwards, I'd, I'd use the colour to accentuate that there's contrasting lengths inside it, but I want it all to, to kind of just be a hint of that bowl line continuing through. Okay, so I'm going to go through and recreate the same shape through this other side. So again, Taking a curved section. The reason I've decided, I, I, I chose to take the section this shape is because that's that's how it's all going to fall. The kind of hair doesn't really fall straight to the side. It kind of falls forward onto the face, especially on these mannequin heads. So that's what the decision was for that. So we we'll repeat on this side. I'm just going to check out that I'm happy with my fringe length. So you can see I'm just continuing that fringe, just putting a very very light line from the fringe. So through that top, there's just a couple of pieces of hair that are continuing my fringe. And, and the reason something like that's important, I think, because even though I'm cutting on a little bit more on instinct rather than like a too much of a, a, a structured, um, a stru how can I say? Even though I'm, cu I'm cutting on not so much on like a structured haircut, I still want there to be a connection all the way through. So me continuing this line from the fringe all the way through, it, uh, it, it, it means that there's like a red thread running through the whole of the haircut. So I'm gonna continue now. Again, as I said on the other side, I'm really removing the length, removing the weight and just letting it see how it reacts. I'm not committing, I'm not going in and carving a shape too quickly because if I do that, it's, uh, I, I might miss something that, 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 I, that I wish I hadn't. Just checking if there's any questions coming in.
So I'm just looking from the other side now to see the shape. So you know, you can see this is still sitting a little bit heavy. The ends are a little bit too blunt there. So I'm gonna go in and just very lightly. And as, as with most things with the razor, it's all about the pressure. How hard are you pressing that in? Now just like this, to sit a little bit shorter at the front so the, the front piece kicks a little bit higher than the piece behind him because I, I do want this to, to feel like a haircut that's short in the front and then flows longer into the back because all the pictures in the book that I was talking about, they all kind of have this, this, this heavy shorter shape that kind of feathers away from the face. So this, tri this cut's cool, but how do you trim it in a couple of months? I would say it's a case of the same as anything, you're assessing it. So whether I'd use scissors or I'd used um, a razor, I would never do the same haircut again because some bits, whether I'd use the texturizing or a slicing technique with scissors, some bits will have grown out heavier, some bits will have grown out lighter. So I would always go in and assess it. Normally what I do, if I've done a razor cut and it's been a particularly like kind of, say I've done a lot of texturizing with the, with the razor, what I would do is I would probably go through for the first, if I felt like the ends were a little bit too wispy well, I, I, after the client had come back in, for me to go straight in with the razor again, I would go through with the scissors and I'd, I'd refine all of the outline and almost put like a, a kind of clean layer in and then if I wanted to go back through using the razor. So it's like I'd almost like hit the reset button, clean everything off, anything that I felt had grown out a little bit too wispy and then that gives me a bit of more of a blank canvas to go back in with the razor. So, so, so. But what I find using the razor with, on uh, clients is that they just love that they get two or three haircuts that are during the course of the cut. So what tends to happen is, I, I, if I was to cut something, especially on a shorter shape, if I was cutting something with a razor, uh, or with the scissors, and it had grown up, more often than not, the client would feel like that had been a little bit heavier. Where if I've done that same shape with a razor, what I've found is that clients would come back in and been able to tuck the hair behind the ears and it's grown out a little bit, um, it's grown out a bit softer. Maybe the, the fringe has started to kick or maybe the sides have flicked and gave them something that they didn't even anticipate. So I find more often than not with a razor haircut, they get two or three styles during the course of the cut rather than me cutting with the scissors and it's that's the kind of best it's going to be on that day and it'll get progressively longer and progressively heavier during the course of the, the say 10 weeks till she comes to get it cut again so yeah I, I always i think scissor cutting is is my first love and i think i will always love it but the more and more i use razor with clients uh i don't know the, the more options i feel like i have really so I'm just look, checking out these sides before I commit to moving on to the back. So at this current time, I'm happy with the sides. I am going to go through, probably with scissors as well, and refine out the outline. Um, but for the time being, I'm kind of happy with it. And you can see, just to recap on this side, as I said at the beginning, I'm just putting a faint line so this line that I've created from the fringe, I'm continuing it through the top in a very, very, very light, faint way because I don't want it to, to be a, a disconnected haircut where there's a bowl and then there's length. I want it all to blend in, but I just want there to be that overall hint that the fringe is continuing through. So we're gonna split through to the back now. I found that the tapered ends of a great razor cut allow them to move freely as they grow. Yeah, I agree. I agree, oh, it's Gerald. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's, it, you find, it, it, it brings out the personality of the hair much more. And I'm always of the uh, opinion that I like to impose myself on the hair as little as possible. I like the hair to be the hair. And I find with uh, a razor cut, it's, it's more about the hair than it is about me carving a shape into it. Um, so uh, Bob has asked, would I recommend this cut for all hair types? I'd say most hair types. The only time I wouldn't 
is if the hair was particularly frizzy or particularly damaged, where the, the thing that, that that client needs is structure. And if that client needs structure because, I don't know, maybe there's a colour process or maybe she just naturally has hair that, that is a little bit more um, broken and that doesn't have the, the density through the ends, then I, of course I would go through with scissors and, and add structure. But for any haircut that I want to remove weight and I want to uh, kind of shatter what already exists, then I love the razor for that. So, you can see if I just quickly section off this out of the way, you can kind of see... What I'm creating here, I've got this heavy bowl from the fringe and this bowl's coming through and just a hint of it continues on here. And I've got this that's kicking a little bit shorter and then going longer towards the back. So, as I said before, this is a little bit more of a, a conceptual haircut and it isn't a haircut that, it's more, what I would like you to, to take from this is techniques that you could adapt onto the client because the shape I'm gonna combine the back with now is a little bit stronger. And that's when, this is where the combination cutting comes in because I'm gonna use scissors on this so that it's really square and really flat. Because I want to create quite a strong, almost mullety feel through the back. When I started using the 1990 hair to ever see it. I like the hair to feel like her. Yeah, I think that's, that, that's right. That Trevor saying that I like the hair to feel like her is um yeah it's a true thing because you, you as i said you're not you're not imposing on the hair you're letting the hair be the hair and you're just teasing it away right so i've taken a central section through the back not too thick uh, not too thin because i want to really see the shape come i want i want to see the shape develop quite quickly so I'm not taking anything too blunt and like i said it's going to be a little bit con more conceptual so it ain't going to be for everyone but who likes everything that's for everyone. So I'm pulling it out square from the head. And the reason I'm using a razor, uh, sorry, the reason I'm using a scissor on this part compared to a razor on the front is because I want the back to be, I want the back to be quite abrupt. I think that's a good way to describe what I'm trying to say. I want this to all be really flicky and soft and then this back to just sit into the head. And that's uh, because the book that I was talking about, about the skateboarders, they move, obviously a lot of the photographs, the guys, let me just make sure I'm pulling that square. Um, a lot of the photographs in this skating book, the guys are moving because he, the, the photographer has captured them mid, uh, mid skate. So a lot of times you get in hair that's, that's kind of flying out and then you get in hair that's been pressed against it because of gravity. So there's some beautiful shapes. And what I really liked in one of them was that the head was just really, really flat. And then all of the front was, because this guy kind of had his head tilted, all the front was, front was flicking and kicking. And it was really nice. So. Uh, I would love to see dry cut. I don't know many who can cut dry. Yeah, I agree, actually. You don't see many, many uh, dry cuts. In fact, tomorrow on Daviness Education Facebook, at the same time, 7 p.m. UK time, I, uh, I'm going to be doing dry hair cutting techniques, so it's quite nice that you've said that. So I'm going to keep cutting in profile so you guys can see. I always, I always find it's most most helpful if you guys can uh, see directly through the, the section I'm cutting rather than looking at it. So I'm making sure that I'm pulling this square. I'm using the guide from the previous section but I'm not over directing, I'm making sure everything's a square line all the way through the back. Through the bottom section, as I arrive just below the occipital, you'll see that I'm, I've, I've moved from cutting up, like say halfway up my scissors, um, to just using the points of my scissors and starting to pull out as I'm doing it. So I'm only cutting with the last half centimetre of the scissors and then starting to pull out so that I'm, so that I'm keeping this length through the bottom because that's what's going to help me 
I almost want to leave kind of a safety net all the way through the perimeter of the haircut. So when I've done that, I can go through with the razor and refine it and start adding. I want to add some little holes behind the ear as well. So having this length, even though I know I'm probably going to lose a bit of it, it gives me options. And when you're cutting hair, I think options are always good. You at the bottom, but you invert the last piece. Yeah, you could invert the last piece as well. So that, that was a, a, a question from Dennis. You could invert the last piece, you know, you could work around the head and as you square here, you could bring that in so it's sat really tight. But I want to keep all the perimeter just a little bit flickier and a little bit softer. Uh, when the client have a lot of hair, uh, can they brush it well by themselves? Yeah, I think so, especially if you're using the razor. I think they can brush the hair well by themselves because the razor is going to remove weight. Now, the razor can remove weight from really inside the haircut, so you're reducing the, the mass of hair that's on the head or the razor can just remove weight from a centimeter through the ends as it is doing through the fringe. You know, it's almost like, if you can imagine there's a, there's a, a, a straight piece of hair, solid, one length, and you go through with the razor, say a centimeter from the ends, you're creating very, very couple of millimeter shorter pieces of hair, and that shorter hair is gonna press in on the longer hair. And when the shorter hair presses in on the longer hair, it creates an uneven surface. And when light hits an uneven surface, it creates shadows. And that shadow is what texture is, if that makes sense. It's the same reason that this bottle of oil milk reflects the light, because it's a smooth surface. And this paddle brush is the same color, but it doesn't reflect the light because it's an uneven surface. Because that, as the light hits it, it's more it's absorbed rather than reflected, and that's all texture is on her. It's creating a, uh, an even one. So let's, let's think of it as a one length bob. You take an even one length bob surface, the light bounces right off it. That's why it looks great and it shines. Now you go through with a razor through that. You've created different panels of weight that are going to press in. The shorter hair is going to press in, create an uneven surface. The light will hit that and rather reflect it'll absorb it, it'll create shadows, and that's texture. And when I started thinking of texture like that, it, it, it opens your mind to, to using it in a different way, if that, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna continue on with this back. So I'm not over directing the back into the middle. I could do, but I feel like it would get a little bit too long behind the ear. And because of the nature of the shape of the head, I don't really need to over direct the back. As long as I'm pulling this square, the head curves in. So because I'm pulling this square, the length will increase automatically. If I was to, to over direct in, then the length would increase quite dramatically. And uh, then I'd end up just probably with too much like a, a standard layered haircut behind the ear. So who's that? Uh, all right, mate, how do you go about mapping a haircut when using kitchen haircuts as an inspiration? <laughs> so I think what he means that it, by kitchen haircuts is people doing their own hair or the mate's hair in a kitchen. And for me, it's all just the shape. Like, what is the shape I want to create? I don't think about the technique. I feel like if I think too much of technique, then I start to be like, the technique starts to own me rather than me owning the technique. So I always think, what shape do I want to create? What's the, the end look? Whether it's a photograph or it's a, it's a look for the, a client. Once I've got that end look in place in my mind, then I'll think about, okay, how would I go about it? Would I use, what tool would I use? I, I suppose I would always find, start with a tool. Do I use scissors? Am I going to use a Demon brush? Am I going to use, use a round brush? Am I going to use razors? Am I going to use thinning scissors? Then from there, I'll start to think about, okay, where does the weight need to be distributed? Because basically that's all her cutting is, isn't it? It's distributing weight in ways that will be flattering to a bone structure or a face shape. So I'll start to look about, okay, do I wanna make the weight dis be distributed on the jawline, on the eye socket, on the cheekbone? Where do, what do I wanna frame? And it's this, you know, a frame of anything is, is so that your eyes are drawn into the middle of it. That's why a picture has a, that's why a picture has a frame around it, so your eyes are drawn into what's in the center. So there's no, that's no different with a fringe. 
You know, if, if I want, if so, or, or a, a bit of texture on the face, if someone has a great cheekbone, I want to, I want to put something right there because if there's two things right there framing it, it's going to make people's eyes look straight at those cheekbones, which are the, the most flattering part of that person. And that's the same for lips, jawline, eyes. So that, that would be the next thing. Like what, what are the things that I want to accentuate? Uh, and what are the things I want to cover up as well, because I think I know with, with, with my, even when I get my hair cut, there's certain things about the shape of my head that I like and certain things that I don't. And there's certain, then I'll adapt the haircut to, to uh, cover up some things and accentuate other things. And I think that's the same with anyone. So I'm coming towards this last section now. If you wanted to as well, you could come here and work up, but I don't really like doing that because I want to be able to, to pull it out as I get to the bottom. So I'd have to spin my hands and I don't wanna. So you can see I'm still pulling this square so that if I was to cross check it, square line all the way through the back so as I come to this point you'll see if I just comb the hair up through here if I was to pull this into there I'm gonna cut this short and I'm gonna leave a little hole here um, which is not what I want so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna what, what I was doing through the perimeter I start to pull out I'm gonna do that much earlier on this bit because I'm starting to incorporate the side Pulling this back, square line, and then as I get to here, start to pull that out so that I'm still leaving myself with that little thing. And I'm going to over direct all this back. I'm not going to start working around the head at this point because then I'll start to eat into my side shape that I've already created and I'll start to run out of hair in a second. Okay, so you can see that I've got the square line here and this bit is where I've started to pull out and exaggerate so that I'm keeping that length through there. And I'm gonna fly through this other side. So. Mm -hmm. Trying to see if there's any. So I'm gonna go quick through this other side so you guys can see when I start to go through and refine the outline because I always find with this type of thing, <coughs> excuse me, the outline is the funniest bit because that's when the, the overall shape really comes to life. So I'm pulling this out square from the head, using my guide from the underneath. Pulling it out. So just to recap for anyone that has only just joined, this haircut concept is a, is a combination of a few different things. It's a combination of me want, me having the time during this current self-isolation that we're all going to, to <coughs> let my haircuts dry naturally and not, <coughs> not like to wrap dry or not like to, to impose myself too much because I can apply the product, I leave it in the garden for a few hours and then I just see how the hair's contracted and, and moved. And then the second thing is that I've been looking at a book called Silver Skate 70s um, by a photographer called Hugh Holland. And he photographed some underground skate kids in the 70s. And he did a, a, an amazing, sorry, let's bring that in here. Uh, he did an, great, an amazing set of black and white images all about that skate scene. And the hair in the pictures is incredible. I mean, half of it they're moving because they're on a skateboard, 
but the way that the haircut was, like the, these heavy fringes and these little flicked out ends and these little kicks and obviously then the, the hair is in movement, it's in flight because the guy has got on the floor and he's shot up as they're moving around. <coughs> um, and there's so many ideas in it, there's so many. There's one where it looks like a firefly going into a, a, a layered mullet. And it isn't, but it's just because of the movement of the skater as, as he goes. And they've all, they're all surfer boys, so they've all got these bleached hair, which looks great in the black and white photographs. So, uh, yeah, this, um, this book combined with me wanting to let hair dry naturally as, as uh, how can I say, it's, it's all came together at the right time and these, or the wrong time, whichever way you look at it. And uh, these haircuts are the ones that I'm thinking about. And you can see I'm purposely, <coughs> I'm not trying to be too, too neat. I'm, I'm, I know the overall shape. I want to create a square line through the back, but I'm not trying to be too, too precise with my sectioning and cross-checking every other section and making sure everything's in because I want this real, rawness to it that these kids had that were cutting their own hair yeah so this can be who, who said that so daniel <coughs> yeah this could be a guy's cut when, I, when i'm cutting her most mostly i don't really think about it as it's like it's just the shape and it's the shape for that person so i wouldn't think about it ever think of it as like this is a guy's cut this is a girl's cut it's just a cut and if that person can pull it off then they can pull it off and then that's, that's, that's cool. No, oh, I just missed a little bit of her here. So you'll notice I'm only using half a centimeter, just the points of the scissors, <coughs> excuse me, through the, um, through the ends as I'm increasing the length. So I'm just bringing this back. see when I'm doing that you know I'm missing random pieces of hair and stuff but that's what's going to make the haircut not look too contrived and too technique-y when I'm finished so we're bringing it around through here now I'm going to just I'm stepping back just to look at that flatness that I've created through there which I'm quite liking I'm going to add a bit more of the day day spray because that's going to let me see how the haircut's reacting before I go in and start to commit to the outline that I want to create. Uh, are you over directing it back? Through the sides, I'm over directing it back, yeah. Through the back, no, I wasn't. I created a square shape. Right, where's my razor? So if I turn to profile now, for anyone that was on the, uh, here at the beginning, what I said was I wanted that real flat shape that almost sat up and then the, <coughs> we had this little mulletty crown. But I wanted this bowl shape through the front of this heavy fringe. Because I think having that bowl and that, that, that hint of that shape still staying through <coughs> makes it, I feel like it's, it gives it like a, a newness that if I'd have just gone for the standard mullet where I'd have taken all this really short and then this was textured up here, it would have. It would, I think it would have been fine, but I don't think it would have had like a freshness. And, and all of the cuts that I do, I want them to, to have a thing of like, you feel like, oh, I've seen that before, but it all, but it feels new at the same time. And I think, you know, it's got like a, a nostalgia to it, but, but a newness. And that's, uh, that's, that's kind of something I have in my mind when I'm doing any haircuts. Right, so I'm gonna start to, to look at this outline now. I want to put, I want to show the shape of the neck. I like this through here. Like I said earlier, um, 
this gives me options and I quite like what this is doing, but I feel like it's too solid all the way through. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and I'm gonna have a little hole behind the ear. So I've taken the length off, but then I'm gonna go in and raise her inside it so that it flicks a little bit. So I just separate the front from the back. And I can really start to see my little bowl in there. I'm going to actually strengthen that up a little bit through here. You know, I was saying earlier that I've got the bowl through from the fringe. I'm going to make that a little bit stronger. And all I do to do that is literally just pull down onto the line and kind of just reaffirm it with the razor. This is still a bit too heavy. something similar through this side. A little bit more day day. I'm getting worried I'm running out, running out of the day day spray. I'm gonna have to uh, <laughs> try and get some more delivered if, if I can. I'm going to come in this side and make a hole in here as well. And then go inside it as well so that it, it flicks. Keep lifting it up because all I can see is the comments on the screen. So that I'm lifting it up so I can go above the comments so I can see the shape. I'm going to apply a little bit of product now. I'm adding it using the, the Davines texture serum. I'm just rubbing it all the way through. And if this was a client now, I'd ask her to tip her head upside down. So I'm going to take the, the mannequin head off for a second and make sure that she shakes her head out and flips it back up. Because, you know, it's all well and good me combing it into, into shape for 40 minutes or whatever. But does it, when she moves, does, it, does the shape look good? I think that's the true test. So then what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm thinking, I'm making a bit of a mental map in my mind of Okay, which bits do I need to go through and refine a little bit more? I've switched into a really wide teeth, tooth comb so that I'm not manipulating the shape too much. I'm still letting the hair stick together um, rather than going through with the finer teeth which starts to break it all up again. Okay, I feel like this crown is a bit too heavy. I, I, I like in this flatness through here. But... Uh, uh, the Day Day spray is from, to, to Maz, is uh, from Daveness. So if you go onto the, the Daveness website, you'll be able to find uh, whoever's stocking it in your area, whether it's a distributor or, or a salon in your area that sells it. So I'm going to pull this, this crown area back and I'm just running the razor all the way through it because I want to create a little, a little tuft. I had a client come in once and uh, her uh, son Orlando had uh, put chewing gum in his hair and uh, we had to cut it out and he ended up with a little uh, one of these and ever since then I thought oh, it's quite cool actually you can do a little bit of a, a chewing gum cut where you've uh, had to remove it so because that's what I like now that it's got that flatness and then there's this through here but we still have the bowl shape. I'm going to just bring this back in a little bit more and then one of the first things I said on this live 
was that I'm going to be cutting as much with kind of as much with my stomach as I am with my head because I'm going through with the feeling of the haircut just as much as being strict with my technique and I think you know if you've, if you've worked with the razor a lot that, that, then, then you have like an instinct of using it that, that you can be a little bit freer with it and I'm sure a lot of you guys watching have a similar feel. I feel like these sides are a bit too long, so I'm going to go in and take some of these a little bit shorter as well. That's better. I'm just accentuating that hole behind the ear. Because if this was a client, I'd be thinking, I want to still see the shape of the neck. So just having these little, this little V and this little V in here, it still shows the shape of the neck if you're looking from the profile rather than it just all being her hanging around. So, as I said at the beginning, I'm letting all these haircuts dry naturally because I want to let the hair be the hair. So the final thing I'm going to do, again, a little bit more of the texture serum, and all the way through here. my client to tip her head upside down again, shake it out, and now it's just with the hands, tease it into position, nice. So we have this bowly type fringe shape, and we have these little kicks through the side. Thank you, Kelly. And it, I suppose it just, what I wanted to get across on with, with this haircut, it's, it's a case of, you can have that overall shape in mind, which for me was, I wanted a fringe that was too long. I wanted, faint line of that bowly fringe to continue on through the side. I wanted this to just kick out and do whatever it wants to do. I wanted to have a little hole in here that I only really realized halfway, but I wanted this to be flat through the back. I wanted to have this real kind of heavy flat shape. Because I feel like that's a nice contrast and it gives it a newness having a contrast between a bowl line through here and then going quite abruptly, very flat. And then the final thing is this little guy through here. That as it dries, we can have quite a lot of fun with styling. And for a, I think for a photograph, it'll make quite a cool silhouette, something that could almost kick up the wrong way. And just take a little bit more out of there. Right, you could keep cutting a haircut like this forever, but I'm gonna give up. <laughs> so, I'm gonna post the finished result in an hour or so, I'm gonna let it dry for around an hour, I'm gonna put it in the garden. When she's dried, I'll post the finished result online and I'll get on any questions that I've missed because I think I've missed a few of them. I'm gonna get online, uh, go through the comments section and uh, make sure I answer everything. 
I'm going to be here next week, and I think next week I have four lines walking to a bob, which is, it's going to be a, a bob shape, but it's going to be with a difference, and it's, it's not going to be for everyone, which those are the best things that aren't for everyone, as we all know. So, stay cool, keep out of trouble, I really appreciate all you guys giving your time up on this Monday, Easter Monday as well, to, uh, to watch this. So, take care, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks a lot.